ನನ್ನ ಡೆಪ್ಟಿ ಕಮಿಷನರ್ ಆಗಿ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ಗೆ ಯಾವುದೇ ರೀತಿ ತೊಂದರೆ ಇದ್ದರೂ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲದರಲ್ಲಿ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಒಂದು ಕೆಲಸಕ್ಕೆ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಜಾಬಿಗೆ ಸೇರಿಸಿ ಆಮೇಲೆ ನಮ್ಮ ತಂದೆ ತಾಯಿಗೆ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಹೆಸರು ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಫೈವ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಡಿಡೇಟ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಮಿಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ದ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಡಿಪ್ರೈಡ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಡಿಪ್ರೈಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಲವ್ ಆಫ್ ದರ್ ಪ್ಯಾರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಫಿಲ್ ದ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಯೂಮ್ ಇನ್ ದರ್ ಲೈಫ್ no doubt there is challenges problems galore in managing children feeding them educating them working all out for their development it is all one of travails hard work commitment but at the end of the day you feel your life's mission is getting fulfilled set in a prominent city in south india a story that began on the famous marina beach is today a sparkling recollection of a life of an unstoppable indian Patricia Narayan and her story of the last 30 years has thrown up incredible life's lessons of a restauranteur who started her modest career on this very beach in Chennai. I was an undergraduate. I had nothing, no professional qualification. I, I'm not from a business uh, family, anything. But then I realized that I have to do something to fend myself as well as my son. I started doing a little bit of jam, squashes, pickles and all this. And initially I was just serving to my neighbors, friends. The very first day I sent my products, it all got sold. That gave me a lot of confidence. Confidence in my product. A runaway bride to the man of her choice. At 18 years, Patricia realized that her husband was not the man she had imagined to be. And as her marriage turned sour, she decided to leave home with her newborn son. That was the time when my father's friend, one Dr. Nagarajan, he, uh, uh, my father had told him that she's doing this, but then she's not able to, mine was a domestic kitchen, I was not able to do it from there. So he had told him that uh, she's interested into this. So he said that he'll give me a kiosk, but then she has to take the permission from the place where she has to put she has to get the corporation permission and all that and then she has she can run it so the first thought which came into my head was marina from a kiosk in marina to an upscale restaurant in the city the journey's beginning was arduous for patricia my little boy he was about one year just took him i went I went to the secretariat and I think it was a 12 story building or something. I was terrified to go in the lift all alone. Like if it was stuck what would I do? I climbed all the stairs. Finally I did get the sanction. I get I got the permission the way I wanted with the electricity, with water supply. I got it. So I had gone for this uh, thing uh, exhibition in Singapore and that is where I met uh, Mr. Suresh. Actually he is the managing director of this uh, entire Sangeeta group. When we were going around, like I was uh, asking people about the products and all that and he was closely following me and finally he came and spoke to me. And he just spoke to me, he said, uh, he asked me what I was doing and I told him I was into catering and all this. And then immediately he just said, would you like to become a partner with me? I did not want to take failure, okay, my marriage failed, but then totally I, I would not, I did not want to be a failure. I never wanted to be a failure. So success was in my head. I was running towards success. So that was my inspiration. The struggle was hers. I mean, she put us away from all the struggles. You know. She's not what she looks, you know. She's, she's very different. She's, uh, she's more a man in a women's clothes, you know. That's what I would say. She's, uh, she's totally a very, very tough person. I mean, that's something that I really admire from her. 
The struggles of this feisty woman was far from over. While she tasted the success of her toils, she lost a child, a mortal blow to Patricia's resolute soul and that which she tries to find answers to even now. My daughter, her name was Pratipa Sandra and uh, she was just 21 and she met with an accident. Two ambassador cars came and I thought when the cars came, I thought they are alive, then they only hurt or something. And I was hoping with all hopes that they are alive. But then they opened the dickies and pulled both the boys and both the girls from each car. And when questioned, they said the ambulance came there and then they said that all of them are not alive. So we cannot carry dead people in the ambulance. We don't serve for the dead people. And they left. So that hurt me a lot. So it was very painful. It was very painful. Then I said, okay, again, my thought, as I said, I wanted an ambulance in that place where the accident happened. The pages of her life threw up an unpredictable story, a story that she changed, a woman who never gave up, a woman who was unstoppable in every way. Definitely people who see what I'm talking or hear what I'm talking, if 100 is going to hear about it, I think at least one person will be inspired. I'm very confident about it. Because when they see success, like talking success or reading success is different. When they see somebody telling, when they get it from the horse's mouth, definitely it's going to inspire a lot of people and I'm really happy about it.